Hey y'all. Well, here's something a little different. Solid state FM tuner. And I know you're going, what are you working on an FM tuner for? And yeah, but there's probably not a good reason to be doing this. But I was just curious how good a signal can I get off of the air to listen to on my system. And we're going to be exploring this. Again, I want to try a tube FM tuner. Somebody's going to be sending me one of those to try. But did some research and people really like this Denon TU-1500. And supposed to have a really good tuner section that's super sensitive, really pulls in signals well, and supposed to sound pretty decent. So picked one of these up for about 65 bucks, which Obviously, they're not a popular item anymore, and I'm not sure what these things sold for new. They probably were a lot more than $65, but hooked it up, and I just, I don't know. It just sounded kind of flat. It was clean, and the bass was really good. I was kind of shocked how good the bass was, but there just wasn't any top-end sparkle to the sound, and... It did sound better in the daytime, and even after doing these mods to it, to me it sounds better in the daytime than it does at night. And I know the signals are supposed to carry better at night, but I think there's more interference too. And I haven't played with, I've actually still got an antenna on my roof from when I had over-the-air television. I've lived in the same house for like 45 years, so I haven't experimented with hooking this thing up to my rooftop antenna. So... Hey, that may, that may be the trick. But anyway, downloaded the service manual and I saw that it has a op amp on the output. And it's the same dual op amp like they use today still. And I can't remember the number. I'll put it up here. But the op amp they used in this is just a cheap one from 20 years ago that isn't really great and so it got me to thinking hey when i swap those op amps in those little class d amps it really improved the sound i wonder if there's a way to put like a sparkos op amp in this old tuner so sent the schematic over to andrew over at sparkos and he looked at it and said, yeah, that's just a, a pin dual op amp. It should fit right in, but you got to get it in the circuit. And so he sent me a surface mount adapter for one of his op amps so that you can solder this little tiny 8-pin plug onto the board after you remove the old op amp. And then there's another little adapter board that you could put his op amp in one of these things. And unfortunately, the surface mount stuff's all on the underside of the board. If it had been on the top side of the board, I would have been able to like just, you know, had some room to put the op amp on it. But like I said, the op amp was on the underside of the board, so I had to do this crazy mess and cut like a hole in the bottom of the chassis so the op amp would fit in it and you can see it right here and i am going to get like an old 35 millimeter film canister like one of these guys and cut it off and then glue it on the bottom to give it some protection but for now i just wanted to see what it was going to sound like so did some research Found some websites or YouTube videos that showed how to solder and desolder stuff on surface mount boards like this has. And, and I'm really pissed off. I spent a bunch of time setting up the camera, got a macro lens out of my photography collection, put it on some adapters, and got it all set up and thought I was recording working with the surface mount stuff. But after I was about three-quarters of the way through working on it, I realized that 
while the video was on my monitor here, which was helpful because it gave me a super high mag so I could see what I was doing. So it was kind of like, you know, those robotic doctors are looking through those, you know, goggle things so they can see what they're doing, especially with my old eyes. That was very helpful. It wasn't recording the video. And I was like, man, I was pissed. But anyway, I did get the last little bit of soldering the adapter into the board and then was able to show what the inside of the amp looks like and stuff. I can link a video in the description that I watched that showed how to desolder the op amp. And basically, you just flood or bridge all the pins on both sides of the op amp with solder. So they're all like bridged together with solder. And then you get two soldering irons and you put one on each side, put it in the pool of solder until it melts it and then you just lift the op amp off the board. And then you get the little wicking stuff with some flux, clean up the solder that's all puddled up there to get down to the pads. And then I attached one pin on this little adapter to kind of nail down the little adapter thing and then I went through and soldered the eight pins basically just put some flux over where you're going to be soldering and you get some solder on like the tip like that and then you just drag the tip from the pin over to the pad and it just lays down a little line of solder it really helped having it magnified, well you can't see it, it's off camera, but I got a monitor over here and having a video camera with a macro lens had it super magnified. It really helped me see what I was doing. I'm sure you could use one of those, you know, they make those magnifying glass things with a light around, a ring light around it. Something like that would be helpful because this stuff's really micro tiny. So anyway, let me show you what I did record of that and then we'll talk about what the end result was. So we're gonna come in here and solder on the second four pins. Like I said earlier, I thought I was recording this video and I wasn't. So we have a little bit of a tag there. Whoops, we bridged across to the one pad next to it. So we're gonna come in here with some wick and I always dip the wick in a little flux to make it where it really sucks the solder up good. So we're gonna soak up the excess here. And then, there we go. It's unbridged. Now there is a little wisp of solder on that resistor next to the socket, but it's not bridging anything, so I just kinda left that alone. And here I'm trying to add a little solder to make sure it's got a good mechanical connection as well as the electrical connection because we are going to be tugging on this socket a little bit. So like I said, just a little solder on the tip and then drag the solder loaded tip across where you want to add some solder. And there we go. Add it a little bit there. I'm just gonna kind of go over it one more time. Trying to get it as well soldered down as I can. And it makes like little rows of solder there. So I'm happy with that. And it doesn't appear to be bridged to anything. So then I'm gonna come over here on the other side and add a little solder because like you can see the tab sitting there so I'm gonna try to build up a little kind of mound of solder on each one of those little tabs so it's mechanically connected well and then here's the finished socket this is the little adapter board that comes with a little kit and this is what the op amp will get soldered to and then that plugs into that little micro socket that we installed on the board and so it can plug in and out and then we're gonna 
get that soldered on and plug it in and we'll be done. So it's pretty easy to pull the board out. Got that screw there. You have to pinch this little guy here to pull it up off that peg. There's another screw here. And then on the back, there's... Let me see if I can get this where you can see it. So there's a screw there, one there, 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 there. And then you just need to carefully get a screwdriver and pry up these. The green part slides out of the white. And then over here, you want to disconnect it on this end. So that's not real tough. And let me show you what it looks like with the socket in it and it modified. And then let me zoom in here. And there we go. We have our little socket here, little access panel under the bottom. And if I'm gonna put one of these modern ICs in, and this is the number one pin right here. So if I was gonna put a modern IC in, it'll sit right in there and it's almost flush. And I'm using one of these NE5532 Texas Instruments chips as a test before I put the Sparkos chip in it just to make sure that this is all going to work. So I don't want to put a, not, a you know an ex more expensive little chip in there and have it blow up. But you can see it does sit up proud of the board, but it doesn't stick up far enough where the feet won't clear it. And you can see with the Sparkos chip, it's a much taller deal. So it might have an issue, but I think it's going to fit. And if I have to add a little height to the feet, that's no big deal. So let me put this thing back together and see how it works with this Texas Instruments chip. And I have a feeling even that's going to be a big upgrade over that old kind of generic op amp this thing had in it. And then if that all works, I'm going to pop the Sparkos chip in it and see how that works. So let me go do that. And so a good place to wrap up this video. So again, this was the final result. Op amp sitting here, you know, hanging out below the bottom of the chassis here. It actually is not lower than the feet. So when you just set the thing down, there's a little bit of clearance there. Like I said, I think I'm going to trim down one of these old 35 millimeter film cans and like maybe hot glue it to the bottom of the chassis just so it's got a little cover on it and kind of hold it up in place. So now you're wondering, what does it sound like? It was definitely an improvement. It's got some sparkle on the top end now and it definitely brought out a lot of detail that wasn't there before. Now, the way this op amp works in this tuner is it's a buffer on the output. So it's got one op amp that does both channels to like buffer the output, but it definitely brought this to a much more detailed level and just, just a more pleasant to listen to. It's got more treble. It kind of brought up the upper end and before it felt like it had just like a veil over the sound and it's like that veil was lifted by putting this op amp in so hey if you like listening to fm radio and you've got a tuner like this one of these solid state guys from back in the 70s that's got one of these ancient op amps that were common back then i think this op amp's still being made today and it's just, you know, the five cent little cheap op amp. It's not really considered audio quality today. Putting one of these in was a fun little project. Not a lot of money. And yeah, for less than $100, it really brought this up to a much higher level than it was before. So, hey, it's kind of a fun little project. If you've never worked with surface mount stuff, this is a way to play with that. Again, yeah, this thing is so cheap. If I had bricked it, hey, wouldn't have been upset. I wasn't going to listen to it the way it was. You may have one of these sitting around already, and you may feel like I did that it's got kind of a veiled sound to it, and putting one of these op amps in is definitely an upgrade. So, might be a fun little project to try. So, anyway. 
Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, if you like this kind of DIY content, subscribe to the channel, like the video. Thanks to all you folks that support me on Patreon, and thanks to folks like Andrew at Sparkos that sends me stuff like this to play with. And until the next video, have a nice day. Bye.